I have my pile of books. I have my absolutely adorable mug that has ghosts and stuff on it. And it has maple spice and salty caramel syrup in it. And it's just so good. And I am ready to talk about spooky books. A couple weeks ago, I did a haul of books that I've owned for a while. And so I thought that it would be a good idea to show the newer ones that I have. So the books that I'm going to share today are not all 100% new. They're ones that may be like a year or two old. Um, these are all new to me this year. And you may be saying to yourself, Leslie, you're one person. You can't read that many in one year. And you're right, but that's okay. I just need to be more comfortable, I think, with reading my spooky books during non-spooky season two. I don't have these in any particular order. I think um, they're all going to have some element of the gothic or supernatural or horror to them. Uh, I'm just going to go through, give the synopsis as best I can, and hopefully in you know a good month or two I'll have some thoughts about each of them. The first one that I picked up is Leech by Hiron Ennis. And this is one that I looked at last year and I just wasn't sure if I was going to like it. I'm kind of picky with well, I'm just picky in general. <laughs> it's fine. I should just be honest. Um, but I can be kind of picky with horror because I just have such high expectations. I want it to be super creepy. Something was holding me back from this, but I, it came out in paperback recently. And so I went ahead and picked it up. It sounds like medicine has uh, taken a really weird direction, kind of like science fiction. It says that for hundreds of years, the Interprovincial Medical Institute has grown by taking root in young minds and shaping them into doctors replacing every human practitioner of medicine. The Institute is here to help humanity to cure and to cut, to cradle and protect the species from the apocalyptic horrors their ancestors unleashed. But then one of the doctor bodies kind of goes missing. I don't even know how to describe it. I hope that it's creepy. It sounds like it is. This is a great cover too. Next one is The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. I've never read anything by Chuck Wendig before. I'm pretty sure he's well known for being a horror author. But this one is about a couple and as children they each had kind of horrific, potentially abusive situations happen to them. And now they're married and there's something, it says, there's something sinister, something hungry, walking the tunnels and the mountains and the coal mines of rural Pennsylvania. They're back in their hometown and they have a son who meets a strange boy. It says on here that he's the master of literary horror, which is right up my alley. So I hope this is a good place to start with this author. We'll see. This next one I think is the probably the most lighthearted of this haul. And I use that word loosely because it still does sound like it could be pretty creepy. But in this book, The Keeper, Keeper of Enchanted Rooms by Charlie N. Holmberg, um, it says that in 1846, this writer inherits an estate uh, in Nagaranset Bay. And it sounds like it's kind of a haunted house. And then there's this other character who is from the Boston Institute for the Keeping of Enchanted Rooms. She's in charge of taming structures like the one that our main character has inherited. I don't know why this sounds to me like it could be more more lighthearted than some of these other books, but it just does. I think the cover is doing something to me. I do have a good number of more cutesy fall, like horror autumn vibe books. I didn't include them in this haul because they felt kind of out of place. That almost feels like it could fit into that category potentially. Here's the other side of my mug. I just love cute Halloween stuff. Um, the next book, Tell Me I'm Worthless by Allison Rumfit, uh, fits in with that whole like haunted house, spooky house type vibes that I have going with a lot of these books. It says that three years ago, our main character Alice spent the night in an abandoned house with two of her friends. And ever since then, she's had basically a hard time existing. She's drinking herself to sleep. She's kind of got nightmares. One of the friends asked her a few years later to go back to the house. It sounds like one of the three friends got stuck there. It says that the house claimed her. It's an interesting premise to have already had the experience and have to go back 
to the place. All right, I have the newest Teen, Teen Kingfisher book, A House with Good Bones, and this one I actually have already read a book from my last video, which was The Twisted Ones, and it sounds like it has sort of a similar jumping off point where the main character has to go back home. But in this case, her mother is still living, so she's going back to live with her mom for a while. Her mom just seems strange. The walls of the house have been painted white, and her mom's really jumpy, and so the main character is trying to figure out what is going on with her mother and I know that I like T. Kingfisher. This one seems pretty short so I might pick it up when I'm feeling particularly slumpy or like I just need to pick up the pace with my reading a little bit. <laughs> this next book sounds kind of bonkers. This is Sister Maiden Monster by Lucy A. Snyder and this is more of a like sci-fi horror novel but it sounds like it's in a post-apocalyptic future after see a virus has taken over the globe. One of the characters develops an appetite for a woman in her brain. I don't know if that's literal brain or not. You never know with these kind of books. It says another character is a professional BDSM switch and she discovers a new turn on committing brutal murders for her eldritch masters. And then the third character, main character is plagued with chronic tumors and is too horrified to acknowledge her divine role in the upcoming apocalypse. Like I said, this book sounds pretty bonkers. I hope it's good. It sounds like it could be so crazy in the best way. All right, the next one I have picked up, um, I have a few books in here that sound like they're very, or they're horror in a very odd, unsettling way, and this one definitely sounds like that. The blurb of this one reminds me a bit of that X-Files episode with the family that's like living in the middle of nowhere and their mom lives under the bed. If you know, you know. <laughs> it sounds like this is another sort of post-apocalyptic thing that there's a, this mysterious environmental cataclysm that has wiped out the rest of humankind. And then there's this family that is existing and perpetuating the human race via incest basically. But then one day the matriarch, who's the head of this family uh, apparently, dreams that there are other survivors and so she sends one of her daughters to go find them, to be their bride, and then it kind of re it disturbs their sort of, I guess, <laughs> the lifestyle that they had developed as this like incestuous post-apocalyptic family. I don't know. <laughs> this is another one where weird family stuff is happening. This is Mother Thing by Ainsley Hogarth. And in this book, a couple moves in with the um, male's mother and the, this mother-in-law is apparently really horrible to her daughter-in-law, but then she ends up committing suicide and then haunting her daughter-in-law. There's a blurb on the back that does make it sound like there is going to be a little bit of humor in it. It could just be like balls to the wall terrifying and frustrating that this woman is still being a, a total bitch to her daughter-in-law, but yeah. The main blurb here says she's dead in the basement and she's refusing to leave. The next one is a short story collection, 19 Claws and a Blackbird by Augustina Bezterica. She wrote Tender is the Flesh, which as far as I remember, it was a book about seeing people, but it had become sort of industrialized. And this is her short story collection. It's, oh, Sarah Moses is the translator. I have never, I never read Tender is the Flesh. I have it. So I really don't know what to expect from this. And it's really hard to give blurbs of short stories. Okay, this one seems like it might be sad, like sad horror kind of thing, like Babadook. <laughs> if you've seen that movie, that was like sad horror. But Monstrilio by Gerard Saman. Samano Cordova is about a woman and her son passes away and she takes a piece of his lung and keeps it and somehow out of that piece of lung creates another version of her son for himself but then it doesn't go very well as you can probably imagine and so it seems like she's created a sort of monster but it's still her son and so she's grappling with grief. Premise of this sounds so interesting. I really like horror that's not just, you know, blood and guts and gore and stuff. This next one, Venko by Sherry DeMoline, is around witches. So this woman who lives in Toronto, she's kind of bored with her life. She encounters this group of of which is a, co a coven that's <laughs> the origin of the title, but she finds a group of witches and they are working to 
help women kind of regain power in society. This main character starts to find some purpose in her life with these witches, but then there is a witch hunter who comes into the picture. And so this one feels like a very different vibe. It's a contemporary, like urban setting. And it also says that the main character is a millennial. And so I don't know how much of that sort of, you know, millennial literature type five is going to seep into this versus how much it's going to be like supernatural or scary but we shall see our share of night by mariana enriquez quite a chunkster i think it's the longest book that i have in this whole stack but this is about a father and son um they've recently lost the mother wife of the family and so they go on this road trip and they encounter this cult-like group that is in search of the secret to like eternal life and so I feel like they might be caught up in this group because of the fact that they are mourning someone and so the idea of you know eternal life sounds really interesting it says also that it moves back and forth in time from london in the swinging 60s the brutal years of argentina's military dictatorship so it sounds like there's a lot going on in here like political stuff family grief like supernatural i have read her short story collection, The Dangers of Smoking in Bed. She is very graphic with the bodily functions, very strange, disturbing, like uncanny descriptions. And so I hope that those make um, their way in here, but I'm very interested to see how that translates into a longer work where that sort of like image punch of imagery should be more sustained we'll see okay my last book is delicious monsters by liselle sambury and this is about a woman a, a girl and her mother and the girl can see ghosts um, but they move out of the city what which is full of dead people and they move into a like a rural isolated place and the girl suddenly cannot see dead people anymore. Her mother is quite abusive though and so they spend some time in this house and the girl you know goes through a lot of things being isolated with her abusive mother and then it says that 10 years later her mother is claiming that this house cured her of her you know abusive ways. The girl knows that this or I guess now woman knows that this is not true and so she's kind of grappling with what they went through at that house. Sounds like it could be emotional as well as potentially creepy with the whole seeing dead people thing. So those are the books that I have bought most recently to put onto my spooky TBR. I could start any of them right now. I'm excited for pretty much all of them. If you have suggestions for which ones I should start with, let me know if you've read any. Of course, I don't want spoilers, but if you've read any and recommend them, let me know. And in the next video, I am hoping to either have recommendations for my favorite creepy fall spooky books, or I might have a, a sort of reviews of some of the ones that I have read recently. Either way, I'm gonna do both of those things in the coming weeks. So hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye.